Thomas Kissinger back with you. This will be Lessons from History, Part 6. We're once again reading George Saris' book, Heaven's Doors. And we're reading from the section where he outlines early church fathers who believed in the ultimate restoration of all things through Jesus Christ. And another one here that is mentioned is Theodore of Mopsuestia. So let's get right on into this. Theodorus's student, Theodore, was a bishop in the church for 36 years and was revered at his death. Throughout his long tenure, he enjoyed an excellent reputation for eloquence, learning, and orthodoxy. The Nestorian church conferred on him the title, the Interpreter, because of his merits as one who carefully studied and interpreted the Bible. He was considered the foremost teacher of the school of Antioch. Theodore's belief in restoration was the direct result of his understanding of the greatness and goodness of God. Being great, God was not taken by surprise at the entrance of sin into his creation. Being good, he incorporated it into his plan in order to ultimately benefit mankind. Here's a quote here from Theodore. For since God created man when he did not exist and made him ruler of so extended a system and offered so great blessings for his enjoyment, it was impossible that he should have prevented the entrance of sin if he had not known that it would be ultimately for his advantage. End quote. But how would the entrance of sin into the world benefit those God created? I'm always amazed at how birds build their nests in the spring. No one teaches them what to do. They just do it. They build wonderful, often fascinating nests. But all birds of a particular type build the same kind of nest. They are not free to choose what they would like to build. They are programmed, in a sense, to do what they do, and they always do it. Rational creatures, however, are not like that. We are actually free to do things in different ways. In his commentary on the book of Genesis, Theodore explained that the freedom to sin that mankind has is, in itself, a very good thing. God could have made us with instincts like the animals, but he chose to make us free. Theodore understood that created beings left to themselves would surely sin and need to be redeemed. But if they had never been given the freedom to choose evil, they would never truly be able to understand good. In his wisdom, God allowed death to enter the present world so that in the future world, his grace would be able to bring life and immortality to all. Here's a quote. God divided the creation into two states, the present and the future. In the latter, he will bring all to immortality and immutability. In the former, he gives us over to death and immutability. For if he had made us at first immortal and immutable, we should not have differed from irrational animals who do not understand the peculiar characteristics by which they are distinguished. For if we had been ignorant of mutability, we could not have understood the good of immutability. Ignorant of death, we could not have known the true worth of immortality. Ignorant of corruption, we could not have properly valued incorruption. Ignorant of the burden of sinful passions, we could not have duly exalted in freedom from such passions. In a word, ignorant of an experiment of evils, we should not have been able properly to understand the opposite forms of good. Theodore recognized that sin's pleasure is only momentary. In the end, it always leads to sadness. That's why it will never last forever. There's another quote. The wicked who have committed evil the whole period of their lives shall be punished till they learn that by continuing in sin they only continue in misery. And when, by this means, they shall have been brought to fear God and to regard Him with good will, they shall obtain the enjoyments of His grace. End quote. His confidence was ultimately in God's goodness. God is not hard-hearted. He punishes sin, but his punishments have a purpose 
and that purpose is for the eventual benefit of the creature. God would not, this is another quote from Theodore here, God would not revive the wicked at the resurrection if they must needs suffer only punishment without reformation. So we'll stop there, but Theodore brings out some really good points. The two major points are God is great and God is good. That means God is all-powerful and God is love. And if that is the case, ladies and gentlemen, it is impossible that God could lose anyone in the fullness of time, let alone the vast majority of the human race uh, suffering in a hell forever that we are taught by modern-day Christianity. It's just not the case. They just don't really understand fully God's greatness and God's goodness. All of that, in the end, is going to lead everyone back to Him through Jesus Christ. And that last point that we brought up, where it says, God would not revive the wicked at the resurrection if they must needs only suffer punishment without reformation. God's not going to bring the unrighteous, the evil and the wicked, forth in the second general resurrection to just raise them up, to just torture them and punish them and hurt them some more. No, God is going to reform. God is going to correct. So, there you go. There you have it. Theodore of Mopsuestia. And we're going to pick up next time with a little bit more of him.